Next, I'm going to check the axis of the heart. I've been complaining throughout the lecture that this canting of the heart into the left hemithorax causes us problems. But the good news is that the degree of canting is almost always the same in fetus after fetus. And while it is not necessarily exactly 45 degrees, this line is approximately 45 degrees. This angle is approximately 45 degrees. So we draw our mid-sagittal plane to show that only the right atrium is predominantly in the uh, right hemithorax. Then we draw a line through the interventricular septum, showing that these two lines subtend an approximately 45 degree angle. So spine, descending aorta, left atrium, left ventricle, right ventricle, right atrium. Diameters of the ventricles about the same. Blood goes to the apex and the black blood in the left ventricle goes nearer to the apex than the blood in the right ventricle. The diameters of the atria are good. We draw our mid-sagittal plane line and we see that only the right atrium is predominantly in the right hemithorax. We also note that the left atrium is juxtaposed to the descending thoracic aorta and the anterior wall of the right ventricle touches the anterior chest wall. Also, after we draw our mid-sagittal plane and a line through our interventricular septum, we see that the axis of the heart is normal. So here again, just visually draw our line, draw our line, and we can see that the axis of the heart is normal. <clears throat> Here, we draw our mid-sagittal plane and a line through the interventricular septum, and clearly the heart is too horizontal. Here, we draw our mid-sagittal plane and a line through the interventricular septum, and again, clearly, the heart is too vertical. This fetus has a congenital structural defect of the heart. This fetus has an acquired cardiac abnormality, but these can both be detected because the axis of the heart is abnormal. Look, you don't have to know why the axis of the heart is abnormal. You check the axis, you don't like it. It doesn't look like it's 45 degrees. You're done. You're going to pick up the dictaphone and recommend an echocardiogram. Here we see two hearts that are clearly too vertical. Now in this, these two cases, both of these are diaphragmatic hernias, not congenital heart disease. Now, the reason I show these two cases is because this case here is the most difficult congenital, di congenital diaphragmatic hernia that I ever diagnosed. Now, I don't say this to brag, but I probably have the world's largest experience in diagnosing congenital diaphragmatic hernia. And this case here is the most difficult one I ever encountered. Why? Because this is not the left lung and this is not the right lung. This is the left lobe of the liver, and this is the right lobe of the liver in a fetus with a bilateral congenital diaphragmatic hernia. In this case, which you've already looked at, the heart is too vertical. But if you can tell that this isn't the left lung and that this is the right lung, you have a very good eye and probably don't need this lecture at all. But I can assure you, this is not the left lung. That is part of a congenital diaphragmatic hernia. The reason I show these two cases to you is because in both instances, the referring clinician sent it because they said, Dr. Philly, the heart is not in the right position. 